Hey there, welcome to Higher Level Gaming. This is Newswatch, and today we're going to be talking about Soldier Boy releasing some more consoles, the growing trend of in game ads, and PUBG's growing mobile numbers. Soulja Boy is in the gaming news again for some more consoles. He announced that he was so successful on his first run that he's going to be making some more. So in a recent tweet he just said Soldier Game Fuse which is just the Fuse which was a game console, a knockoff game console, a Chinese knockoff game console which is just the latest that Soldier Boy has taken and rebranded with his Soldier tagline. <laughs> Here we have a Game Rant article open and it says, Again, just like the Soldier Game handheld, it's easy to see that the Soldier Game Fuse is just a drop shipping effort. So I'm pretty sure drop shipping is just when you um, purchase things and it, like you, you don't even necessarily have like a production of your own. You just like are yeah. buying and trading these things. It's funny because he says all his things are on huge discounts on his website, but everything is clearly overpriced and he's clearly just selling these things to you at a big markup. Soulja Boy is in potential legal trouble with Nintendo as they threaten to sue him over his consoles because they're advertised to contain Nintendo ROMs. Nintendo sued a lot of people this year over their ROMs, so Soulja Boy would just be the next found guilty if he doesn't stop. Apparently though, he has no plans to do that because he said thanks to all the attention he's been getting, it's helped him sell a lot of consoles and he just plans to put out more. So if that's the case, we probably will see some legal action. Yeah, Nintendo's not gonna play. Yeah, no, they really sue people. <laughs> so I really sue people. <laughs> and to top it all off, according to Review Tech USA, the consoles aren't even being shipped. He also talked about wanting to do an esports team with someone like Ninja, so if he does want to do that, he's definitely not gonna be able to be selling these super illegal things on the side. Nobody's gonna want to be taking part in that. Definitely not. He should try to just like get involved with some actual legit gaming people because he could probably make a lot of money and not have to sell these consoles that are basically garbage. Yeah, I, I just think it's kind of crazy. Like it kind of seems like Soulja Boy's kind of lost his mind with this one. So I don't know what's up with Soulja Boy. Um, last thing I heard, he had a beef with Little Yachty. Now and this, so who, who knows? Yeah, beefing with Little Yachty, that's like how low the mighty have fallen. Yes. <laughs> we joke a lot about how PUBG is basically dead and they're just struggling to survive, but it's actually kind of surprising to learn that PUBG is doing just as good as Fortnite when it comes to mobile right now. The mobile version of PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds now has just as many players as Fortnite at over 200 million users, the company told The Verge. Both games now have around 30 million daily active users as well. The article also mentions that PUBG was named best game of the year in Google Play, though it's important to remember that Fortnite was not taking part in that competition, so who knows what would have happened if they were allowed in. Bloomberg recently reported also that Fortnite hit the 200 million player mark, so it's possible that more have started the game since then. But the PUBG number notably excludes China, meaning that it actually likely exceeds Fortnite in popularity if everything was tallied up. It also doesn't include the more than 50 million copies sold of the paid version of PUBG on console and PC. And in some more surprising news about successes, the Xbox, PS4, and Switch according to GamingIndustry.biz have done just as well as each other this year. All of them have sold over 1.3 million units just in November. The article says this is the first time in history that three console platforms have all sold over a million in a single month. So the games industry is just getting bigger and bigger all the time guys. But of course we already know that. Yeah. We just started a YouTube channel. <laughs> In the article by Rebecca Valentine, it says Black Friday weekend and its surrounding month in the United States prove an excellent time for hardware sales, as usual in the US. According to this month's NPD reports, though, software sales were lagging due to a release date shuffle in the year's biggest title. Overall, game sales for November were flat year over year at 2.7 billion, 
with software sales declined offsetting increases elsewhere. Year to date, spending was up 16% to 13.2 billion. In hardware, November 2018 was a historical month for the first time ever. Three console platforms sold over 1 million units, the Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One all sold over 1.3 million units. And the Nintendo Switch's sales growth helped to offset the declines on other platforms, so the Switch has had a really good year. Though the Switch led hardware sales this past month, the article also mentions the PS4 remains at the top in year-to-date sales. So Sony is still the big winner of this generation. So yeah, Nintendo, they've actually managed to have a pretty good season. Reggie from Nintendo, he also talked about how, you know, the holidays are always when the company does best, and we're actually seeing that this year. Huge with things like Pokemon Let's Go which was a giant title, and then of course Ultimate, which followed that up, which is another giant title, and they obviously were shipping tons of consoles this November. I'm honestly most surprised that actually Xbox was able to keep up with everybody else, because Xbox, in my mind, is still the one platform. Sorry guys, regardless of their backwards compatibility, that doesn't seem worth it to me. It's just the only game console that I don't think is worth your money, so... It's crazy that they're able to keep their sales up as well, and I honestly think that come next generation, the Xbox One, or the Xbox Two maybe, <laughs> will have to be considered by Sony and Nintendo as an actual competitor again. Yeah, I'm surprised the Xbox is up there too, because I, I don't know, like, I know what games are coming out for PS4, and you know, with Nintendo we have Super Smash, which was really huge, but... With Xbox, I'm not really sure what huge titles. Yeah, Forza. They really have Forza was out. like their best, uh, most recent exclusive, which is you know a great racing game. But that's yeah. like the only thing that I know that they got recently. Right. Yeah. So, good job Xbox, I guess. Then in another article from GamesIndustry.biz, and the same writer Rebecca Valentine, she always has that good stuff. She was talking about how in-game ads are beginning to catch on and become a serious trend in mobile which is kind of scary for us gamers on the consoles and the PC because as we've seen recently they just love to put that mobile bullshit in our real games. Yeah. So as she says in her article studies indicate that both casual and core mobile free to play games are making an increasing percentage of their revenue from ads. And if you thought the loot boxes weren't bad enough guys. Delta DNA has published its ad survey result for 2018 showing the data from a survey of 336 developers of free-to-play mobile games over a period of 12 months. The survey showed that while the majority of both casual and core games are still driving half or more of their revenue from in-app purchases, ad revenue is becoming increasingly viable. And as we all know, that's actually already catching on for real games because Street Fighter, Capcom, they decided to put ads on their fighters. So now you load up Street Fighter and it's like some fucking NASCAR bullshit. Ryu is no longer wearing his nice clean white outfit. He's got a bunch of fucking ads all over him. The article goes on to state that the majority of casual game developers make less than 40% of their revenue from ads, but 16% derive 80% or more from the same source. So that's a stark increase from last year's survey where only 10% fit into that category. As for core games, 70% of developers surveyed said that their games made more than 20% of their revenue from ads and up from only 50% reporting the same last year. That's a pretty big spike. Yeah, that seems like a pretty big spike. It seems like ads are definitely putting in work when it comes to earning more revenue, but for us, it kind of sucks. It's gonna be like, you wanna fight that Dark Souls boss one more time? Watch this 30 second yeah. ad. <laughs> Watch this 30 second ad. Don't like ads? Get good. This is pretty unimaginable for most people um, that they would put ads into your main games like Assassin's Creed or whatever. But I'm pretty sure we all were thinking the same things about loot boxes and microtransactions and cosmetics and blah 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 not too long ago. So don't feel too safe. It might not be the fighting games, j just the fighting games for long. I wonder in the future if it's going to be like, you know, you're playing your game and then like instead of the screen going to black and you waiting for it to load, like a short ad plays before you can get to like the next main sequence of the game. Right, they're like, we're just trying like... to efficiently <laughs> use our time and your time. The load screens are just 30 seconds now. They got yeah. really long this generation. <laughs> we couldn't help it. We just put the ads there to give you something to look at. The last thing that we have for you guys today is a really small story. But something that I think is really cool as someone who played the creative game Little Big Planet. 
where you kind of build your own levels. It's a really cool game. If you guys haven't heard of it, maybe look up some YouTube videos of the game. It's super interesting. But they have a follow-up to that game now called Dreams, and it is going to be releasing its beta. The beta is, I think, as of you watching this video, the beta will be live. Media Molecule will finally release the first beta for Dreams, its upcoming Create Your Own Game Maker, to a select group of users starting December 19th. Subscribers to the studio's newsletter will have first access to the demo, while the general public will be able to take part in a beta starting January. The studio held a live stream on Tuesday afternoon to announce the launch, which it had previously promised would happen before 2018 was up, so they just made it in there. Good job, guys. The article goes on to say, as for Dreams itself, it remains undated, but it is indeed playable as we discovered at a preview event earlier this year. And unfortunately, you won't be able to just go and rush to sign up for it now. Only those who subscribe to the newsletter prior to December 7th will qualify for the early access. Latecomers and other curious parties can register for the beta on January 4th, and you might receive a code as of the 8th. Yeah, it kind of sucks because I was thinking that I was going to go sign up right now, but <laughs> too late. Yeah, we are like, we'll just go sign up now. <laughs> Beat the system. No, they thought of that really obvious one. Yeah. Damn it. At any rate, it's pretty cool that this game is finally coming out. They've been showing us footage for a long time, and I believe the announcement was something like five years ago, so finally. That was it from us, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in to Higher Level Gaming. If you enjoyed the video, why don't you give us a like and maybe consider subscribing. If you do, don't forget to hit the bell to always find out when we post videos. Have a good one. This eye is not merely seeing reality. It is touching the truth.